A worker cooperative, or co-op, is like a business, only instead of being controlled by the boss's boss's boss, it is controlled democratically by the workers themselves. Every co-op has a constitution, or rather a set of bylaws, that everyone follows. While each co-op has different bylaws, they all have similarities. They might say something like this. A cooperative worker is also known as a member. Each member gets some share of the co-op's profit, and each member gets equal voting power when making decisions. Well, sort of. The issue with voting on every little decision is that there are so many to be made that it requires hours of meetings every day, leaving no time to actually do the things your co-op wants to do. So most cooperatives elect a board of directors to make some kinds of decisions, usually ones necessary for the co-op to operate, while other decisions still must be made democratically by all members, usually bigger picture decisions like modifying the bylaws, accepting new members, or electing board members. Elections are held regularly so that any board member who abuses their power or otherwise runs things badly will be voted out. You and your coworkers can fire your boss. Imagine that. There's tons more to the bylaws, addressing things like the process behind board meetings, member meetings, decisions without meetings, consensus and voting, and how people get paid. Worker co-ops have an average pay ratio of 5 to 1. That means the highest earner makes 5 times more than the lowest earner. Compare that to traditional businesses with an average pay ratio of 320 to 1. One could make the case that people who take on more responsibility should be rewarded for it. But to what extent? Is anyone's time really worth 300 times more than mine? In worker cooperatives, we the people have real power in deciding what that ratio should be. In the United States, there are over 18 million businesses, and out of those, only about 500 are worker-owned and democratically run. One reason there are so few co-ops is that it's difficult for them to outcompete traditional businesses. Since co-ops tend to pay their workers more, offer more benefits, uphold a healthy work environment, and pay members for attending meetings, they tend to have to raise their prices to stay afloat. These prices don't compete well with traditional businesses whose prices are low because their workers aren't treated well. But despite this, some co-ops survive anyway. Some have found untapped markets where competition hasn't set in. Some are in areas where people want to, and are able to, spend more to support co-ops. Some co-ops have made compromises to their democracy by hiring workers who aren't members. They can't vote, don't get any shares of the co-op, and are at the full mercy of the members in the board. Under the current economic system, the more democratic co-ops generally are at a disadvantage. So do cooperatives stand a chance? My answer to this question is, I don't know. But it's worth exploring the possibility. Cooperatives are more resilient in areas where there are other cooperatives and low unemployment, because in those areas, traditional businesses tend to lose employees. But it's hard to start a lot of cooperatives at once, let alone start just one. But if we could reach a point where co-ops dominated, they would have some serious revolutionary potential. If co-ops become diverse enough in their production, it's possible that they could network together and make coordinated decisions. Each co-op in a given area could elect a representative to have meetings about what each co-op needs and what surpluses are available, and decide how to distribute them. Each co-op could get their production materials from another without relying on money. There's no reason to stop there. The network of co-ops could also start directly distributing goods to its members, diminishing their need for money. After all, what good is money if your needs are being provided for? As people rely on money less and less, traditional businesses would get weaker and weaker. Cooperatives would take their place, one by one, until all of society's productive forces are worker-owned, democratically operated, and oriented not around profit, but around the betterment of humanity. We have a lot of work to do if we want to make this vision a reality. And different people have different roles to play. If you don't have the means by which to start a co-op, you can try to find an existing one to join. Or if there aren't any around, start conversations about the concept. If you know a lot of people and are highly connected with your local community, and you're privileged enough to have the time, you might be able to pull together resources to start one. If you're a business owner, you can transition your business into a cooperative. Finding a craft that can also support other cooperatives helps to form the very beginnings of a mutually supportive network that could become the new organizational basis for all production. Thank you for watching this video. I do not run ads, and I never will, so if you want to support me, you can do so on Patreon.